Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to have a brief look at Linux Mint's new website. That's right. Their website was pretty old for a long time, and some people thought it was pretty stinking ugly. Uh, and I kind of thought it was a little ugly myself. But they have released their new website, and it is looking pretty nice. There's actually some things on here that I didn't actually know Linux Mint did. Um, but you could find them now a lot easier because of their new website. So you've head on over to linuxmint.com. You'll see what they have been working on. It's a very nice, uh, looks like it's definitely based on bootstrap without looking at the code any further than that, just based on how everything looks and how it functions. Perfectly mobile responsive now, which is good if you're looking it up, uh, just trying to see some updates on their, um, on their website on a phone or a tablet or something. It's going to work a whole lot better for you. We have the donate options are really, uh, really prominent now, which is good. We have a nice, uh, large menu here for various links. We have the official website. Website. We have the blog, the forums. The blog and the forums are still old. Um, I did not see the community website before. We have social media, GitHub, Facebook, Twitter, IRC chat, and community, Reddit, Discord, and local communities. So very nice links there. We have under our about options, we have a variety of uh, the FAQs is good. We have a lot of good, clear, easy to follow documentation, screenshots, uh, privacy and cookies team, etc., and then under the project, we have the donors, the sponsors, the partners, the store, and uh, how to contribute. And then the download options, we have the Linux Mint 20.2, which is the most common for everybody. We have a Linux Mint um, Debian Edition 4, and then you can actually go back and download all versions. I believe that this will only contain all versions that currently have some degree of support in them. So you can see here that 19 still has support, 18 no longer does. So you can't go back into the much, much older ones. You'd probably have to dig deeper on the internet for those. But at least on the website um, here, you can grab all of the current uh, all of the current builds. Now, one thing that I did not know that they actually had in the past is they actually have an Edge Cinnamon for 20 and 21. Maybe I just missed this in the release notes before. But um, the edge cases are if you're wanting to run Linux Mint on newer hardware, as of course some of you know there are some issues with brand new hardware, generally doesn't work well with Debian, Ubuntu, things like that because it's so new. Arch, you might have a better chance, but the Cinnamon Edge is a version of Linux Mint that comes with a newer kernel that is going to support a whole lot more hardware. And uh, it looks like they've actually been doing it just for 20.1 and 20.2, and I just missed it in the release notes. But here it's nice and easy to see. Of course, try the 20.2 without the Edge version first, and then go to the Edge if you need to. On each one of the download page, we have an easy link to the installation guide, the release announcement, the release notes. We have the torrent download. We also have information very clear to see about verifying the integrity of your install. This is going to take us to a page to talk about how to verify your ISO image. So very nice. This is the way that I do it as well. So lots of really good, helpful tips right there. And then here are all of the direct download mirrors that you get. So very nice uh, organization on the new site, everything that you will need to find. And then of course, going back home, we have our download and our, down and our installation instructions. They have put a lot into indicating why someone might want to use Linux Mint. What is it? They talk about graphic design, productivity, multimedia, gaming, and um, then we have easy to use and comfortable. Here's why use it. There's a couple of different options we have in here. Uh, free and open source, rock solid, everything works out of the box, the uh, KISS approach, you know, keeping it simple. And then you have a few of your primary questions over here with more uh, frequently asked questions as well on the site. There's from uh, the different press articles, Tech Republic, uh, Ars Technica, PC Mag, Fosbytes, and then here's links to the latest blog. Now the blog posts, um, you know, this goes back to the old blog site, so this is not uh, not yet redesigned. And so if you get on over here, you can kind of see what it looks like. That's pretty much the same as it has been in the past. Hopefully they change those down the road as well. So as far as uh, 
as far as everything here, um, I don't really have a lot of uh, criticism on the website. It looks pretty good. Um, maybe if there is anything that I would recommend um, is they're not using SEO um, uh, SEO titles as much. Something you can't see unless I show you the whole desktop here is if you look at the URL bar, it's edition.php and then they're calling in an, an ID. This is probably because they're um, utilizing a pre-programmed page that might need the uh, ID number in there. Um, I've actually designed websites which have the same degree of complexity, still hiding the PHP stuff, getting a good URL friendly title. Um, that's something that could be looked into. And hey, if they reach out and want to know what I did, I can send you samples. Um, I assume the site is still WordPress um, as it was in the past. Uh, oh, maybe it's not WordPress anymore. Uh, let's have a look. Oh no, they're using uh, they're using a different platform now. They they are no longer using WordPress. Um, so yeah, I couldn't I can't help with that at, at that point. I'm not familiar with the the platform they're now using. But anyway, um, I really like their site, and uh, I like the the fact you have your uh, your quick links to everything that that we have here. And of course, uh, for anybody that has not followed the channel for a long time. Uh, Linux Mint is the distribution I'm going to recommend you go to, um, and they have three uh, three primary options: your Linux Mint Cinnamon, your Linux Mint XFCE, and your Linux Mint Mate. They also have, if you are more of a pure free and open source guy, they do have the uh, Debian version, which is the LMDE. That's Linux Mint Debian Edition. That one currently is based on, I believe, the previous version of Debian, uh, but they'll get the new one out as as they have time to do so. So we'll see, uh, we'll see more about that coming on down the road. But if you are new to Linux, their installation guides are excellent. In fact, let's go ahead and have a brief look at that, what that installation guide looks like. Uh, head in on, on over here. This is at linuxmint-installation-guide.readthedocs.io. And then I'm at slash en slash latest here. And the installation guide is very nice. Everything from downloading it to verifying it. The live boot, post-installation, troubleshootings, frequently asked questions. Um, and then we just have a lot of different, uh, just a lot of different options here. So if you want to uh, multi-boot, keeping your... Uh, Windows there. Windows does not, does not detect op their operating systems and does not feature a boot menu. When you install it, it overwrites your boot sequence to your computer and then boots straight into Windows, Linux Mint, and most Linux distributions detect other operating systems and build a menu. So it kind of walks you through all these things. Um, so there's just a lot here. If you're doing uh, client work and you want to do the OEM install, we have a specific document page for that. They have the where to find help, the forums, chat rooms, and other resources here as well. We have troubleshooting, EFI, and the various boot options. So there's so many cool things here in the, uh, in the document guide. Uh, there's also some, some information on... Um, uh, snaps in here as well and stuff like that which um, we can actually uh, you can actually find those should you need to their FAQ page is also very nice just has some basic information here um, for individuals companies system requirements 2 gigabytes of RAM 4 recommended 20 gigs of disk space and um, uh, 1024 by 768 resolution uh, and then Basically, everything else is is very good. We have a lot of different options here on uh, commercial type stuff. Primarily just says, yes, you can use it. Just make sure you're not representing yourself as Linux Mint, as I am not Linux Mint. Um, this just happens to be my favorite um, operating system that if you are switching to Linux, this is probably going to be the best place to go. So have a look at their new website today at uh, linuxmint.com and uh, grab your ISOs if you've not already done so. And I have now been running the 20.2 for about a month now on my laptop and it runs great. Never had any issues with it. I'm running a full encrypted setup. I link into private VPNs, just all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm using it for a combination of work and media and downloads it's just a lot of different things. So definitely have a look at Linux Mint if you are looking to make a switch over Linux and their new website should be a lot more comfortable for the modern web user to use. So have a look at it today. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. 
you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.